Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. In this video, we're going to look into IGCSE physics energy transfer. We're going to look into conduction, convection, and radiation. And we'll end the chapter with some insulation technique to prevent thermal energy from getting lost to the surrounding. So let's look into conduction. In general, metals are good conductors of thermal energy and non-metals are poor conductors. In fact, um, air and water are also very poor conductors of thermal energy. So here we have a few materials and I rank them in terms of how best they can conduct heat. And let's look into how conduction works internally. So I have non-metal here, um, glass rod. When the glass rod is heated at one end, the atoms are vibrating more than they are at the co-end. So you can picture that these are, they are vibrating. And as the atom vibrate, they collide with their neighbors. And this process results in each atom sharing its energy with its neighboring atoms. And the collision gradually transfers energy, so it vibrates and hits the particles from one end to, to from the hot end to the colder end. And energy is steadily transferred down the road and from left to right here. So that's conduction in hot matters. We know that they are not very good conductor, but they can still conduct en um, heat energy. So I'm going to show you what happens when metals is used instead. So instead of just normal particles vibrating here, in matter, there are also freely moving electrons. And as this matter is being heated, instead of just the vibration, the electrons will also be able to carry thermal energy. And with the vibration of atoms and movement of electrons, metal can transfer heat a lot quicker from one side to another as compared to a non-metal. So just a visual aids. So in liquid, particles are in close contact. The particles are free to move unless, unlike solid, which they are all packed together. And therefore, vibration are not passed on as easily as it is in solid. This makes liquid not a good conductor like a um, solid, but we're, we're going to look into how liquid can transfer energy more effectively later. Whereas um, conduction in gas is even worse because the gas particles are very spread out and therefore they can't really transfer heat energy via vibration. You know, even if this vibrate, they can't pass on to the other particles. So, in, instead, thermal energy in liquid and gas mainly occurs through another mechanism called convection. And it works by having the particles that are less dense move upwards. So what I mean here is that, so let's look into how convection works. Imagine I'm heating up uh, water here. So the water particles at the bottom are being heated, making it, to ex making it expand. So in like this image here. And as the water particle expand, you will see that the volume, first of all, the volume increases. And because of it, this result in the density of the particle here decrease. So if you remember the formula for density is d equal to mass divided by volume. And because now the volume has increased, this result in the density decrease because now the denominator is larger. So we know that um, particles that are denser will sink and particles that are less than will rise. And this is why as the water particles increase in volume, its density decreases. This result in water particles at the bottom rise to the top. All right. And the water particles at the top then sink due to being denser, which means the colder water here is going to sink and the hotter water is going to rise. And this causes the colder water to be heated again. And heat is then transferred throughout the liquid. All right. So that's how convection happens in terms of liquid and convection in gas particles is also very similar. So let's say we have a hot air balloon and what causes it to rise up is because as we heat up the air particles here again, the air particles will expand and as a result, the density decreases and the warm air is now less dense than its surrounding and therefore it will float upward. All right. So the hot air here is less dense and we know that less dense object will rise up and hot um, denser is going to sink. Therefore, this um, air particles inside this hot air balloon is going to push the balloon up. So for the balloon itself, plus the basket and its occupant, must all together have a density 
less than the surrounding cold air. So in other words, hot air rises when we heat them up, and that's what causes the hot air balloon to rise. So here are some differences between convection and conduction. For convection, energy is transferred from materials from a colder, warmer place to a cooler place by the movement of the materials. In other words, the air particles here, they move, right? Whereas conduction, they happen, they transfer energy from warmer place to cooler place without the material itself moving. Remember, conduction only happens when particles vibrate, but not particles move. So, um, Here's how convection current can work in different applications. So if you are living in a winter country, so this is where the heater will be located. So they will heat, because we know that hot air will rise and cold air will sink, therefore the heater is usually located at the bottom so that cold air, cold air can enter it very easily. Um, so that's how electric heater work. Whereas for a refrigerator, the freezer is often uh, the freezing compartment is always at the bottom because we all, the all cold air will sink down and this is what, what we want, right? We want this to be colder than the upper part of the fridge. So that's why this is being put um, at the bottom instead of at the top. We need the cold air. So that's two methods how heat can be transferred. Conduction for solid, convection for liquid and gas. There's another way heat can be transferred. So think about the sun. How is the sun, how does the, hot, uh, the heat in the sun reaches us, right? So it's via infrared and ultraviolet radiation. So that's the third word that we'll learn. Radiation is the form of energy thermal transfer, which does not need a medium to travel through. It can travel through vacuum. So in this example, the heat in the sun travel all the way through vacuum in the space to earth via radiation. So all objects actually emit radiation, whether you is this guy um, working out or the co hot coffee. The only difference is that the hotter an object, the more infrared radiation it gives out. So here are some of the characteristics of infrared radiation. They are produced by warm or hot object. It is a form of electrical, electromagnetic radiation. Travel through empty space in the form of wave, even they can travel through vacuum as well. Travels in a straight line instead of a zigzag fashion warms the object that absorbs it, is it is invisible, and can be detected by nerve cell in the skin. So, um, for radiation, here are two. A surface that it, um, this shiny surface here, wh or white color, they are called good reflector and poor absorber, meaning if you radiate heat energy on them, they're gonna be able to reflect it, but not able to absorb it. Whereas a black color, it is a surface that is a good emitter absorber and also a good emitter, meaning they can emit heat very easily. So um, application of it will be a sun shoe. You will see that they will usually be in bright color. That's because we want to reflect all the lights and infrared radiation coming from the sun. So here are some of the factors that affect how much radiation happen. So imagine this, um, this beaker that has contained boiling water is placed in the room that is 35 degrees Celsius. And because the beaker has a higher temperature than its surrounding, the beaker will radiate more energy per second than it absorbs, all right? Meaning there will be more radiation coming out than the radiation being absorbed by this beaker. And another scenario would be if I could um, some ice into the beaker, the ice will then absorb more radiation compared um, than emitting it. So the third one is that imagine I have a beaker that is at the same temperature as the surrounding, they will absorb thermal energy at the same rate it emits um, thermal energy, meaning there won't be any temperature changes. So thermal energy transfer. So one thing that we need to understand is that radiation will transfer heat energy only from a warmer place to a colder place and not the other way around. So this is why if let's say we need to make sure that this beaker is always has, um, always at 100 degrees Celsius, we, we need something called insulation to prevent heat to transfer to the outer side via radiation. So here are some of the insulation application and techniques. One example is home insulation if you are living in a winter country. 
it, a well insulated house can avoid a lot of energy wastage during cold weather. Insulation can help the house from becoming uncomfortably hot during warm weather. So here are some tips to on how to insulate your house. You use thick curtain to stop convection current, and you use loft and underfloor insulating materials to prevent the heat from going out via conduction. You use double and triple glazing of windows. Vacuum between glass panel will cut out losses or gains by conduction and convection. Cavity wall, meaning you put you have a gap between the wall. This will reduce thermal energy or loss by conduction. Or foam or road wool in wall cavity reduce thermal energy transfer by convection. So here are just some techniques that um, you need to know if let's say you want to insulate your house. And the second application of insulation is a vacuum flask. I think this is a lot more common to keep hot drink hot and cold drink cold. So the, here are some of the features of the vacuum flask which makes it a good insulator. So first of all, air is removed from the gap between the double wall creating a vacuum which is here. So this is a vacuum here and because there's no air particles, this means that heat cannot escape via con convection like the hot air rises because there are no air inside. So this reduces losses by conduct convection and also reduces loss, um, heat loss by conduction because you know there's no, no matter here at all. Like no air particles, no solid. So heat cannot be um, transferred via conduction. Another thing feature is the silver coating on the glass, which is over here. They reduce losses by radiation by reflecting any infrared radiation. So meaning if the air water here wants to inf emit radiation, they, this heat energy is going to be reflected back to the water, keeping the water heat um, hot. Second, uh, third feature, the stopper is made out of plastic and it prevents losses by convection and also evaporation, meaning we just block out you know, the water so that it will not escape from the surface. All right? So that's um, why, how, what makes the vacuum flask work. Plus it's a glass, so glass is a good insulator as well. They won't conduct um, heat very well. And the third example of heat insulation, maybe this is not so insulate, but you want to release out the heat as possible, is a car engine because they tend to get very hot when you start them for a very long time. And this is why um, most cars usually have something called a heating system. So once the engine heat up, the heat is going to be transferred to the system, which consists of a lot of water. And water is selected because they have high specific heat capacity. They, are, they can absorb tons of heat energy before they, they are boiled. All right. And then second is convection. As the water is heated, a convection current flow in the direction as shown in the arrow here. So again, cold water will sink and hot water will rise up instead. And then the third one is conduction. The radiator has metaphene so that thermal energy is conducted throughout all parts of the radiator. As you can see here, this system basically wants the, all the energy to go out. We don't want to, ins it's like the opposite of insulation. So um, I have a fan here to sort of cool the water down. All right. Radiation, the fins has large surface area and are black to increase the rate of thermal energy radiation, meaning um, it releases heat to the surrounding faster so that the heat is not stored inside the car instead. Um, so thermal energy, so let's look into how thermal energy is related to some of the global issue, for instance, global warming. And global warming is caused by the Earth absorbing more infrared radiation than it released. Here's how it works. So gases in the Earth's atmosphere such as carbon dioxide, they absorb some of the thermal energy and this warms our atmosphere. And the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is increasing, therefore trapping more thermal energy. And global warming happens because now the Earth is absorbing more radiation than they emit to the space. So as a consequence, the Earth is getting hotter and hotter. And also um, the role of ocean current in helping to distribute the heat, because we know water has high specific heat capacity, they can, therefore they can help spread thermal energy from equatorial region to cooler part of the Earth's surface because water will just keep moving. And warm water at the surface of the sea flow towards the pole. In polar region, colder water sink and flow back all the way to the equator. So that's 
ocean current also played a role in helping the earth to cool down. So here, last slide, we have a work example. The code below is designed for a cold climate. Describe the feature of the code which prevent thermal energy transfer by conduction, convection, and radiation. So first, the code is padded, meaning there is a gap between the different materials. So trapped air, which is a good insulator, um, because air is not a good conductor, they can't conduct heat very well. Second part, the air in the padding cannot move, so this prevents loss of thermal energy by convection too. All right. So that one is silver lining will reflect the radiation back to the thermal person's body, just like how a thermal flask would work. So when as you wear this in a winter country, your the heat that your body generates is going to be reflected back to yourself because of this silver lining. And I think that's all about this, and that's the end of our thermal physics explanation. So feel free to let me know in the comment section on what content you want to see, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.